Hi everyone, today I am going to talk about the corrugated uh, horn antennas and how to design them. We have a very good uh, paper written by Tom Milligan. Also this guy have a very very good book where he defines and, uh, this paper in detail. And so let's look at how we are going to design the horn antenna. First of all, let's look at the geometry of our horn antenna. We have here uh, corrugations here, uh, which uh, increase our performance of our antenna, decreases its cross pole discrimination and reduces its side lobes. And we have here, as you see, corrugations. We have here widths of the corrugations, depths of the corrugations, and uh, also our antenna will have a number of them where you can define the number of corrugations. So we will have a lot of input parameters to design the uh, corrugated horn antenna. So you have to uh, define them before designing your antenna. Also, uh, corrugated horn antennas have the input waveguide mode converter where he converts TA11 mode electrical fields to uh, T uh, M10. Also, we have here corrugations and we have here aperture. Uh, we are going to define the input radius, aperture, the profile of the uh, corrugate of a horn antenna, uh, and all, all other parameters. So, let's start, start. First of all, we are going to define the uh, lowest operation frequency and the highest operation frequency. And uh, our higher operation frequency must be less than 2.54 times of our minimum uh, frequency, uh, operation frequency. So according to, to these two frequencies, we are going to define if our antenna is narrow band or broadband. So after this, uh, for example, we have 1 gigahertz, 1.2 gigahertz uh, for frequencies and for this antenna will be narrow band. After this, we will define FC and FO uh, for our antenna uh, in uh, both cases. After defining these four parameters, we are going to find the input radius of our horn antenna, which will be this radius. And how to find this? It's easy. Uh, it's A1, 3 lambda C over 2 pi. And that's it. Then we are going to define an output radius of our antenna. And uh, to define output radius, it's a little bit tricky. You have to say that in which taper you are going to use uh, your antenna. Uh, we have here graph showing uh, how to find the output radius. For example, you are going to use minus 15 dB H taper and your half cone angle, for example, will be 25. So, looking at the graph, uh, minus 15 uh, dB graph here, and uh, we will have around 1.6 times the lambda C of our A0. And let's find the nominal slot depth calculation. As I said that we, have, we are going to have mode converter here, and you can choose three three types of mode converters here. One with the variable def depth mode converter where its depth varies. Uh, we, you will have the ring loaded slot mode converters like here. Be careful, it's not quite easy to manufacture this type of antennas. And you will have also a PC width mode converter. Uh, each type have its pros and cons, so you, you can choose between them. It's quite straightforward after defining the input parameters. So we will have also the number of slots in mode converter and the total number of slots. For example, you are going to have 60 uh, slots in the total of antenna and five slots, uh, five slots in your uh, mode converter. So after defining the type of mode converter and you are going to find the depths of each uh, type of slot uh, in your mode converter according to this uh, formulas where uh, 
KC is your wave number at the FC frequency, AG is your uh, profile radius, and we have here also some sort of sigma parameters to be used in this formulas. You are going to define all of these parameters before you start to uh, design your antenna. After, you are going to uh, find your pitch and your pitch to width ratio uh, of your antenna. And it depends on your application. If you have broadband application, you, your, your pitch must be close to lambda C over 5, or you have, uh, if you have narrowband application, your pitch must be close to lambda C over 10. And after defining pitch, you have to define the pitch width ratio, which is between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. Then mode converter part, as we said, you are going to uh, choose between three of them. Then choice of format, and it changes from five lambda c to ten uh, lambda c. And uh, for example, if you are going to design horn antenna for space applications you want to choose the smaller one and it depends on the final results of your antenna then surface profile as i said uh, but i haven't said yet uh, your antenna can have several profiles like defined here it can be linear sinusoidal uh, asymmetric tangential uh, xp <laughs> exponential hyperbolic and polynomial each type have its pros and cons, and you have to uh, try this and see which profile will work best for your application. And after defining this, you can analyze this in CST, HFCS, WASPnet, or other electronic software that you have. So here, just uh, we have an example. It finds the parameters, defines the profile, and finds the results of the antenna. So let's like. I have designed the MATLAB uh, GUI for designing the horn antenna. And as I said, we are going to input all the parameters that I have told before. The input frequency, minimum frequency, maximum frequency, output radius coefficient, which you have to find from the graph your pitch, your pitch to width radio, your sigma for mode converter parameters, uh, input wavelength length, uh, it's this length, you can vary it from 10 to 20, 30, 30 is enough millimeters, uh, this parameter is in millimeters, and number of corrugations here. Number of cor corrugations will define your length of antenna, and number of mode converters, we will have here one, two, three, two, five no, more convert, and these parameters are used for, for defining the mode converter. So, here you are going to choose the home profile from different uh, profiles that uh, have talked in the paper, and also you have to choose mode converter type here. And after choosing these parameters, for example. I want to be exponential and with bring loaded slot. Click preview. Uh, we will preview the cross section of our horn antenna, which we have here. Zero is the axis, rotational axis of the uh, antenna. And we can see here the ring loaded slots with one, two, three, four, five uh, mode converters. and our total antenna profile here for example we can decrease this to be 40 and if we click preview we can see here our profile of our horn antenna and after this if you are pleased with this for example we can choose other i like hyperbolic with variable pitch to with slots click preview uh, our horn antenna will be like this if we click construct, it will automatically start to construct antenna in our CST, as our examples before, and it will define it uh, one by one. And you can just click here, click component, click 
uh, and add them together. So if we look at our cutting plane, uh, we will have exactly the same horn antenna that we have defined in our MATLAB. For example, let's look at this and look at this. We have completely same profile with waveguide. We defined here the profile, the hyperbola look, and which variable pitch with radio slots, mode converters. And after this, you can just simply click edge, click uh, waveguide port, click OK. And this program also automatically arranges your frequency here. And you can just simply don't use time domain solver. It takes long time, uh, a lot to solve the antenna. Just click frequency domain, click start, and it will start to simulate your antenna. My PC is not very good, so I, I'm just going to stop this. So that's and uh, in next video, I will look at the results of this antenna and uh, will define some important parameters that you have to look after the uh, designing your and simulating your antenna. And after this, I am going to talk about how to use this antenna uh, to design the large, uh, for example, earth stage and station antennas or large reflector antennas for space applications for some other applications. So have a good day. See you.